What's up guys, so I just finished building the printer. What I'm gonna do is real quick show you, um, I've never used software, I've never 3D printed anything before. I'm gonna do a quick 3D print, show you what the result looks like, so you can see uh, what an out of the box kind of novice uh, 3D print will come out of this guy and see if it's the right printer for you. So check it out. For the 3D print, I just took a standard robot model off an existing website to save some time. I use Repetier Host software to instruct the printer how to print the 3D model. Since the provided free software called Cure doesn't support printing directly to the Annette A8 printer. This lets me have two options for printing. Either store the model on an SD card and insert that into the printer, which when I tried this, the printer wasn't actually recognizing the SD card, or use Repetier Host software, which is easy and convenient to use. So there it is, um, just completed Just completed the final print that actually worked. Um, this is just one of those uh, 3D printer maker bots, just a way to quickly test um, if your printer is working, if you're doing it the right way. Um, I will sand it down. I have a, a little sanding toolkit because after the 3D printer there are structures here on the sides of the arms. Um, those are all because you're building up from the ground up so you need to actually support the structure of the 3D printer. Um, as you can see these are all failed attempts all right so I think I did one two three four different failed attempts before I was able to actually get the printer um, with one run without actually touching anything to complete um, the MakerBot robot. Um, this took some things tuning. Uh, this is my first uh, video of actually completing my first print ever with a 3D printer. Um, my previous video is me actually taking this 3D printer out of the box and putting it together. This is the first time I've actually had experience with one of these. So there's things to keep in mind when you're doing your first print, um, things that you should be watching. Um, every time I do this, the bigger I go, uh, the more complex I go, I am going to be supervising the prints because things go wrong. Um, one of the main things that goes wrong when I had the, uh, uh, when I started printing from the bottom here, um, because this is a do-it-yourself printer, I would find that the Z-axis rails, the guide rails here, um, they aren't completely parallel, so um, if one of them would go up when the other one wouldn't, um, this actual extruder wasn't high enough and it would actually run into the actual model. It would either tip it off or because it's hot, because it's hot it would actually start uh, melting into the piece of plastic that it already had. So that was one issue to, f to fix that. Um, this, this, um, the brass uh, bearing over here, I just loosened it to a pretty good amount. The only issue with this, and I just noticed that it's actually happening right now, is that with all the vibrations, the screw's eventually going to come apart and the, um, see that just happened right there. Your, your screw and nut are gonna come apart because it's loose. I do plan to fix this uh, in a more permanent way by, um, I'm probably gonna have to 3D print this side piece right here because it isn't flat. It isn't um, flat with the brass bearing, which is causing the guided rail to angle, which means you're causing a lot of force. And the higher you go up, the more force. And then it, you know, it, it actually started to struggle where it couldn't twist anymore. So it's becoming uneven, which is going to cause a lot of problems in the prints. Um, so for now, just to fix it for the first print, I just loosened up all the nuts uh, and the screws here, and it was actually able to align itself and print okay. Um, another thing to keep an eye out for, your 3D printing uh, filament here, it's on this guided rail uh, on, on, this, uh, on this mount, but it, uh, you know, when the printer's actually moving around, it's not strong enough to actually pull the feed. Uh, so I was here guiding it and making sure I, I left enough slack so that the printer could actually take it and go forward with it. Another thing uh, you want to make sure when you're first printing is uh, when you're actually heating the filament, uh, you'll see that it actually starts to drip from the bottom of the nozzle here. And um, if there's actually a clump there, that's gonna be the first piece on here. So you're gonna have a big clump while the rest of it's gonna start putting this thin 3D printing um, uh, filament across in your design. 
uh, and, and then you're going to realize that that clump is going to ruin either your design and make it uneven or the printer is going to end up running into it eventually because it's actually higher than it expects. So you want to make sure you clean off that nozzle. Another big thing was that um, even though I have the heated bed and I up, up the temperature to 70 degrees Celsius, um, it still had issues for the, uh, the actual print to stick to the bed, which meant that when this guy was moving, if anything, if the filament, you know, uh, grabbed it just a little bit, it would actually move that print off center. Uh, so to fix this, what I did was, um, you'll see here I have, uh, I have the uh, painter's tape down here that way. Uh, I'm going to keep putting a new layer every time because uh, this stuff does get ruined. Uh, and, and that's completely normal. Uh, but I sprayed on top of that 3M high strength uh, 90 uh, contact adhesive spray, which lets you... Um, when you spray it down, it'll actually stick to it very well. Um, makes it a little bit tougher to pull out, but that's not a big deal because I'm going to end up sanding the bottom. Um, and at least it'll stay there and you'll have a nice print like the one I got in the end. Uh, one of the biggest issues, and this might be uh, with only the Annette A8 printer, uh, this uh, data cable for the actual printer head kept coming undone. It, it's not actually, uh, it doesn't actually lock in place too well. Uh, again, it's $150 printer, so the pieces aren't made. Uh, snug they're not made to uh, any type of par of any sort right so it, it came undone a lot and when I wasn't watching and when I didn't realize the print would stop and um, and the, you know the motors are still moving because it, it thinks it's printing um, and you'll see that it's it's kind of dragging the thing all over and you're wondering why it's not printing if you if you see that it's not printing and you don't know why make sure that data cable is on there one of the things that uh, they'll tell you in their instructions, but it's very important to make sure, is that uh, the printer head is only less than two millimeters apart away from the actual printer bed. If that's not, you're going to see that the filament will actually have to drip to the part where it's going down, and then it won't be precise or exact in any type of measure, um, and you're going to see that it'll start dragging. And, and it'll start lifting up so that your very bottom part will be just a whole, kind of like a, kind of like a net of 3D print, all right? It's just gonna be like this because it's dropping until it, know, until it can actually make contact where the printer head was. So you're gonna have this really weak uh, base structure and then it'll start printing on top of it. Um, so if you have any important joints down there, uh, you're actually, uh, you know, your design's gone. Uh, uh, it's going to be screwed up at that point. So something important to do every time you start up the printer, set it to home, see where that nozzle is, make sure it's a really small gap so that when it's printing, it's actually landing right onto the printer bed. Um, and that way you'll have a nice exact print coming right out of it. One thing I know I'm going to end up adding to the printer uh, right off the bat is I'm going to put a little level onto the top of the Z axis here. So I know when those guide rails aren't, um, you know, going at the same pace, you know, they're two different motors. So um, you know, if one of them starts getting off by a lot, one of them's turning a lot more than the other and it's causing stress, um, I'll actually be able to see it and visualize it before I end up printing and wasting some of my, uh, my film in here. So this is everything I've learned from the first print of uh, using the Annette AET printer. Um, again, I was able to make this a successful print without touching or doing anything to it at all, um, which was a really great feeling, to be honest, after failing four or five times and thinking, man, this printer. But again, one of the things I really think is great about having your own do-it-yourself printer is you really understand what's wrong with it so you can fix it and you can really uh, work towards uh, when there's a problem, you'll know exactly what you have to fix. So I think this is a great way to go. It's only $150 if you're looking to get your hands into uh, 3D printing. This is um, a really affordable solution that I think you will be able to um, do. Remember, every printer will have its own faults. So you might have similar issues to what I'm seeing here. You might have some others. Um, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and comment below. I'll try to get back to any, uh, any and all of you uh, guys and try to help you guys out. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and like or subscribe. So again, thanks for watching, guys.